In the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to set up Go High Levels Conversation AI. And to make that possible in that short period of time, we're gonna leverage Zappy Chat's AI prompt generator right here to create an advanced AI chatbot prompt within seconds. And then we're also gonna leverage uh, ChatGPT to create FAQs for our AI chatbot. And just to show you that I'm an expert on this topic, I am or have been um, pretty much updating AI chatbots, advanced AI chatbots with these workflows right here for another agency called BizLab. Uh, so I've been personalizing and creating customized AI chatbots like these workflows right here um, based on Zappy Chat for weeks and weeks, months and months. And uh, I'm excited to teach you guys how to set that up within Conversation AI within High Level. So let's jump right into your high level sub account. I'm now under my agency, gosmarterflow.com in a dummy account that I use for these videos. And we went into settings and then under conversational AI. And once you're there, you'll be brought to this page. And this is where we wanna start. So to begin with the AI chatbot or conversation AI has three different settings. Suggestive is where you kind of, you know, you, you see the, the, the message in a chat window and you can select that, but it's not an AI chatbot. It's you still have to manually select it as a human. So the AI chatbot setting is autopilot right here. It does still say beta, but it's been in beta for months and months. So it's definitely uh, a solid AI chatbot that you can leverage for your business. I've got clients with hundreds of thousands of contacts, uh, big theme parks that basically have used this and they've had no issues with it if you set it up properly. So follow along. If you have any questions, comment them down below. If you need to pause the video, pause it, rewind it, but I wanna do this as fast as possible. Basically here, you select where does this AI chatbot respond to my clients? Do I wanna have it on for Instagram, SMS, the live chat, the chat widget? You can select whatever kind of channels you want here, but you do have to make sure that these channels are connected in your high level account. Most of them are connected right here under integrations. So if you want the AI chatbot to communicate with your clients through Facebook, integrate your Facebook, integrate your Instagram, integrate your Google My Business, integrate everything that you need to uh, within this integrations tab, basically to make the AI chatbot, you know, do its thing. And as you can see, <laughs> if you select things here and you don't hit save, it won't save it. So whatever channels you want, and, and again, just always make sure to save it. And um, this business name will pretty much populate based on the business profile name that you have set up right there. If you wanna overwrite that with an AI business name, you would just type it in right here and you could use this custom field or custom value within your prompt. And then we've got some advanced settings down here, autopilot mode. So how much time should the bot spend before replying to messages? And so this is like a wait time. So let's say I'm messaging with Jenny and Jenny's like, uh, I, I asked Jenny, are you free on Friday? Jenny's then like, no, and sends the message. I'm not free on Friday, sends the message, but I'm free on Saturday, sends the message. So that was a time frame within, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, Jenny sent three messages. And this wait time right here before responding allows the bot to consider multiple messages before responding back. So you wanna set this wait time before responding to 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds so that the bot is still fast, but if leads send multiple messages at once, the bot can respond to multiple messages at once. If you set this wait time, for example, to just one second and you hit save, then the bot basically doesn't wait at all. It's super fast in responding to your leads, but if leads send multiple messages at once, it won't consider the second, third, fourth message that that customer might send before replying. But again, if it does wait, it can consider all the replies in one message and send one longer reply back. So I'd play around with that. Probably a solid starting point is somewhere around 15 seconds. And the maximum messages that a bot can send to a contact that basically will, again, like this I or information tab right here says, will put the bot to sleep after these maximum messages have, have been uh, hit. And I think the maximum here is 25. So I would set it to the maximum for sure. If you are afraid of the bot saying stupid things, then yes, you could set it to two or three messages and kind of review it from there. But you pretty much don't want this limit to hit. It is kind of unfortunate that high level has this limit of 25. I usually, if I set up advanced AI chatbots in Zappy Chat, I set it to 100 or something like that, so that again, this limit does not hit. 
then um, we've got this toggle down here, send bot to sleep when I uh, send a message manually or through a workflow, you can have that on or off. And uh, I think this is a good setting to have. And I think two hours is a solid starting point. So if your client, um, one of your employees, whoever goes in and sends a manual message, or if a workflow triggers, then it puts the bot to sleep. And so I would have that on. And then you can see the pricing here for conversation AI. It does depend on how you have it set up on your agency view. So if we switch to the agency view real fast, um, you'll see that within each sub account, you can set up um, rebilling settings and stuff like that. So if we go to my sub account like this video, which we're in right now, you can see since this is my own agency account for these demos, I, you don't wanna have SaaS mode on and you don't wanna rebill yourself because that then you'll lose money in Stripe fees and that stuff. So, but under rebilling, you could set up how much do you wanna charge for conversation AI and under reselling, you can do the same for the one-time deal and you could say, hey, I actually wanna make profit on this. Let me you know, make $21 profit on each license. And so that license that I just showed you, that's pretty much uh, this setting over here. But if you wanna make profit on this right here, you would just change it under rebilling and you would say, hey, charge the customer 0.03, 0.04 per response. And the difference on what high level charges you in that, that's your profit pretty much. So uh, pretty simple setup on the first one. In the bot trial section right here, once your bot is fully set up, you could test the bot and say something like, hi, what is your name or whatever. And this is a nice, quick, dirty kind of test, but I would actually recommend testing it in um, real life. So we're gonna build up this bot again as fast as possible, and then we're gonna test it through Facebook right here. And you can see I already tested it and it already worked. And so for a quick test, again, after you updated the prompt or after you updated FAQs, go ahead and test it in here. But for the most realistic test, go into your Facebook account and actually test it in Facebook. Reply to your SMS phone number in high level and actually test it there. Reply to your Instagram profile and actually test it there. And while I'm talking about replies, an important thing to understand about all AI chatbots within high level is they never send the first message. They're only reply AI chatbots. So if you want to build out a nurture campaign, then you have to build out the nurture SMS campaign, the nurture email campaign, the nurture WhatsApp campaign. And then only once a lead replies back to that nurture, that reply is um, triggers the AI chatbot pretty much. So AI chatbots in high level, they always trigger upon reply and you always have to set up some of the nurture to uh, trigger that reply. And from within here, we can choose different bots. So we could choose the appointment booking bot. We could choose uh, the general question FAQ answering bot, and we could uh, kind of test those two separate modes, reset the conversation. But let's move on to the fun part. Let's move on to the bot training. And so within this bot training section, this is where you set up the FAQs for the AI chatbot. And you can set up FAQs by scraping URLs. So we're actually gonna set up a AI chatbot real fast for this gym right here in Bali. I'm in Bali right now. This is my gym, it's an amazing gym. So if you ever are in Bali, definitely check this out. It's got an awesome recovery area, pool area, amazing kitchen. I've got their meal plan, uh, amazing workout area, super cool like spa sauna area. And you'll learn more about the spa and, and the gym pretty much once we go through this setup. Um, but you can scrape URLs to create these FAQs. So you could scrape an exact URL like this one right here and say, hey, create FAQs based on this URL. But what I don't like about this feature is that we can't see the FAQs that the bot is creating. So we can have a look here and we can have a look at this content right here, which is pretty much that website content. But we can't actually edit the FAQ and say, hey, when a person asks, how many classes do you have? Respond with this exact phrase, with this exact wording. It will just create the FAQs however it wants to and we can't actually edit it. So here, we again, if the question was, how many classes do you have? Then the bot could respond, we've got over 80 classes per week and we don't have the ability to uh, to change that. Whereas if we create FAQs right here and customize bot responses, we can just manually add it right here. So by manually adding the FAQs in this section down here, like the once the, the lead asks the question, how many classes do you have? We can manually program into the AI chatbot, hey, respond with this exact phrase or sentence. 
For example, we have over 80 classes per week and are constantly adding more. Which class are you looking for? So you could add a follow-up question like this one and just kind of give the AI bot more of your style. So obviously this is gonna take longer, but I think it's worth it because one main thing that I want you to understand, if this is the only thing that you take away from this video, then AI chatbots, there's really just two sections where you can edit the AI chatbot. So if you're unhappy with your responses from your AI chatbot, no matter which one it is, you really can only change the settings of the AI chatbot by changing the FAQs, just like this, what I'm showing you right now, or by changing the open AI prompt of that uh, AI chatbot. And so there's not a lot of things that we can play around with, but the, those two are enough and it does take a little bit of testing. We'll get into the testing phase in just a second. So definitely test it out in the real life scenario and adjust those two sections, FAQs or the AI prompt for your AI chatbot. And I promise you, you can set up an awesome AI chatbot. As you can see, I'm pretty knowledgeable about AI chatbots and high level in general. So if you do need any help, I've got a free community down below. I might even offer free 30 minute consulting calls with my team. So if you wanna book a call like that, see if that link is down below. I don't wanna to have too many of those calls because obviously uh, those do cost money. Um, but there's a lot of great free resources. You can even start a free trial to my version of high level um, with advanced settings like the Extendly 24-7 uh, chat support, uh, Zappy chats, uh, advanced AI chatbot license, all that good stuff. So you can start a free trial there as well. And if you want to be an affiliate of mine and sign up for your own high level license, I've got a link down there as well. But back to the FAQs, now that we've created this one right here, we could hit save and this would be now an FAQ that uh, the bot would be trained on. But back to the FAQs, once you have the first one created, you can always save it, edit it, delete it and do all that good stuff. And so a nice combination between scraping the URLs up here, but then having less flexibility around changing them and manually adding them here is actually scraping the website manually kind of with ChatGPT. And so what I did is I went to Nirvana's website right here. I opened up different tabs and I literally just hit control A on all of these tabs and copied all of this content right here. I put it into a Google doc. As you can see, this Google doc has 25 pages. So it's very, very long. It's just a lot of random content from their website. And now we're gonna control A, control copy, all of this content from here, and we're gonna put it into ChatGPT and have ChatGPT create those FAQs for us. So to do that, you can use a simple prompt like this one. I'm creating an AI chatbot and need to train it with FAQs. Help me create a human sounding FA FAQs based on this website data below, so I can copy and paste them into my AI chatbot system. And then I've got website data and I created these little brackets. Now I'll just paste in all of that website data into these brackets. So you can see I've literally just got the prompt here and then uh, way too much website data. Um, but that's so awesome about, about ChatGPT is that it's so advanced now that it can handle such a huge context window and so many characters. Um, so it worked and you can see here that it's got some general questions like what is Nirvana life? And now we can just copy these questions right here and we can just manually add them. And so if you have an assistant, a VA, uh, something like that, this is definitely a task that they could do for you. It's pretty much just copy and paste it over. And it's again, that combination of, hey, we're leveraging AI, but we're in, we still have the flexibility of, hey, if we wanna change what is Nirvana life answer right here, then we can always go in here and add whatever we want. So go ahead and try that out. and it is good to review these FAQs. So if this is your business or if you're doing this for a client, um, then definitely ask the client, like send this over in an Excel sheet or whatever, um, ChatGPT can actually create that for you and have them review these FAQs. Because again, this is pretty much half of how the bot will respond. And so let me know if you have any questions around that, comment them down below, but this is a pretty cool trick and you can get a solid, 15, 100, 50, yeah, plenty of FAQs going. And it's a constant process with these AI chatbots. There will be questions that you haven't thought of. For my client with app.bizlab, um, they got a cancellation request and we didn't have that pro programmed yet. So then we created an FAQ around cancellation request. And so FAQs don't have to be questions and answers. They can be statements and replies. It's kind of like SEO and trigger words. If, if a client replies with a certain trigger word or phrase, then trigger this answer. It doesn't have to be a client's question. It can be a client's statement. So if a client says, 
I want to cancel, that's not a question. But when, when they say I want to cancel, you can still trigger a specific response and say, hey, send them to this link where they can cancel. Notify you know the employee or whatever and try to win them back. So I guess that's just a thought I wanted to share. FAQs don't have to be questions. They can be statements. And it's kind of like SEO where you once you have a certain trigger word, you want to trigger a certain response. Um, so definitely be creative around that. And I guess that just shows that creating advanced AI chatbots like what we're doing right here right now, it's more of an art and less of a science. So be creative, be an artist, um, and I'm, I'm happy to help if you need help within that process. But now that we have some FAQs here, let's move on to the final step where we create the AI chatbot prompts. And so you can see there's kind of two sections up here. We've got the FAQ support bot that only answers questions and does not book appointments right up here that we can pretty much, yeah, we have to have on. <laughs> and then we've got the appointment booking bot that um, books appointments, still answers questions, but its main goal is to book an appointment. And if an appointment is already confirmed within the high level system for this contact, then the intent switches to the general support bot that you see up here. And so you can have it do that or you cannot have it do that. In general, I do recommend having the bot switch from booking mode to FAQ mode. But if you don't want that on, then you would just toggle this setting on right here to pause the bot after uh, booking mode and you can pause it for a certain amount of days, hours, whatever you want. If you don't want the bot to actually book appointments in the high level system, kind of like this chat bot did right here with me, where it suggested times and then it confirmed the message and did all the booking without sending a link, then you would toggle this on and you would say, hey, don't book appointments, only send the booking link. And you can see once you toggle a certain toggle on, other toggles aren't options anymore. So um, I would personally just leave it like this because if you send people to a link, it's just, uh, it can be a valid, valid option for certain businesses, don't get me wrong, but it's another friction point. Now that person needs to go in, click on the link, put in their data, and actually book with the high level calendar or that whatever link you sent. Whereas if you just book within the chat, like we're doing right here, it's one less friction point and one less point where conversion rates can drop. And this last toggle right here says trigger workflow after booking, execute a specified workflow after a successful point appointment is booked. And so this is a way to trigger these workflows, but it's not act like this is the, the dummy way kind of for, for people that don't know high level yet too well. And so the actual proper way that I would do it is I would build out a workflow within your automations uh, section within your account. So I, this is again, just a dummy account with a lot of uh, different workflows in it. But let's say an appointment is booked within this workflow by the AI chatbot, then you would use this trigger up here to trigger the workflow and you would, you know, trigger it like that. So if a free 15 minute call with Johnny uh, is booked, then you would trigger this workflow right here and this would work and you, then you don't need to worry about this setting back here. So that's the proper way to do it. They again just added this setting right here to make it easier for people. Now let me blow your mind and show you how easy it can be to create an advanced AI chatbot prompt because that is a main part of your AI chatbot's character, what it does, how it behaves, all that good stuff. Let me show you how to do that within seconds with a super cool custom GPT created by Zappy Chat. So we'll go to Nirvana's website right here. Let's say this is, you know, the data that we want to create the chatbot based on. And then we'll go back into ChatGPT, but we'll go into a custom GPT called the Zappy Chat AI Prompt Generator. You can see this was created by the company Zappy Chat, uh, Zappy Chat AI by Graham. Uh, I actually learned for a high level from him three years ago. So he's a really nice guy. And, um, Pretty much we are just giving this custom GPT, it's it's programmed on the back end to just create amazing advanced AI chatbot prompts. And we're telling this custom GPT, hey, create an AI chatbot for this business based on this website data. And then I just copy and paste in the website data that I just copied with you guys. And you can see literally it's got all the, the WhatsApp us, the Facebook, Google reviews, like it's a dirty prompt kind of, it's not clean data. Uh, I just pasted it in and Zappy Chat does its magic. It says, hey, Roll, you're a friendly and informative virtual assistant for Nirvana Life, a luxury wellness and social hub in Bali. Goal, your main goal is to assist users by providing information, helping with booking classes, answering questions, rules. And so I'm not saying this prompt is perfect, but it's a solid starting point that took five seconds to create, you know, and it's the format of it, the structure of it with role, goal, 
rules, conversation flow, um, context, like that's advanced stuff that if you don't never created an AI chatbot, you don't know how to phrase it and, and format it. Whereas if you use this custom GPT, you do. And so I obviously didn't create this custom GPT again. Zappy Chat did. Uh, Zappy Chat is an advanced AI chatbot um, automation workflow. Like it's an open source AI chatbot built for high level, built in high level, and you can customize it a lot more um, than high levels conversation AI. So just to visualize Zappy Chat real fast, it's pretty much these workflows right here. And you do need an expert to help you set it up. I've set up many, many accounts on Zappy Chat and customized them uh, to be different booking bots, non-booking bots, FAQ answering bots. Um, you, again, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but it's a lot more customizable and it works. They've got thousands, hundreds, uh, yeah, definitely thousands of customers by now. And um, if let's do this, because I don't know if I can actually share this Zappy Chat prompt generator with you. Um, I would need the permission of the owner of this. Uh, his name is Andrew to do that. So if you want me to reach out to Andrew, send him a quick email. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Then comment down below. And then maybe if he agrees, I can share this Zappy Chat prompt generator uh, with you folks in the comments uh, or within the title or you know the description of the YouTube video. Um, if you do, comment down below. If not, then I don't have to share it. Um, but again, it's not my thing to share. It's something for Zappy Chat customers, so I don't want to share immediately. I first want to reach out to Andrew, and I'm only going to reach out to Andrew if you guys want me to. So if you do, comment down below. But we'll take this advanced AI chatbot prompt, and we'll add a little bit of um, something down here real fast. Specifically, we're going to tell Zappy Chat, please paste this exact prompt into an easy to copy code box with plain text so I can copy it. and. Um, Pretty much once you have that there, it'll just create it in this code box. And that way, because if we copy it here, you can see it doesn't highlight and it doesn't copy the number. So it doesn't really copy the entire prompt. It also won't copy the bullet points. So it, it kind of messes up the format where if you add this little uh, phrase here, it'll paste it into this easy to copy code box and you can copy it now from over here by hitting copy code into your high level account. and. I didn't mention it just a second ago, but I'll also put my Zappy Chat affiliate link down there. So if you're an agency that is thinking of updating their clients, uh, AI chatbots, you can sign up for Zappy Chat with my affiliate link. If you're a small business and you want to leverage Zappy Chat, you can leverage it through my license and um, I can give you access through my high level license because I've got the Zappy Chat unlimited license and some, a lot of my clients are actually using Zappy Chat. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, comment down below or shoot me an email. But now that we copied that code in that prompt, we can go ahead and put it into our account and we can just select edit prompt. And you can see this prompt here um, has a little bit of a different format within high level. And so this is high level's original format for their prompt. And you can kind of just click in here and delete whatever you want. Um, since I have this Zappy Chat one prompt uh, selected and copied, I'll just paste it in down here and we'll go all the way to the top and we're going to copy this role section right here and we'll put it up here into the role. Who is this bot role goal? Unfortunately, again, this is where high level is conversation. AI is not uh, as flexible as I'd like for whatever reason. We can't change the goal right here. We can, you know, change a lot of things down here. So you could try to overwrite the goal by having the goal right here in the bottom. You could also add the goal up here to the top and see if that helps override it because then you have the goal right here. You have this goal, you have this goal. And so we don't want to confuse the AI chatbot, but this is where you kind of just have to try it out and see if it works. Uh, that is a big part of creating these AI chatbots. But we've got the rules. We've got the conversation flow. We've got the context at the bottom as well. And so ideally, I'll just hit save here right now. But ideally, you would have two different prompts. You would have a, a prompt for FAQ non-booking bot up here at the top, and you would have a prompt for F, uh, for still FAQ answering, but booking bot for some a bot that specifically its goal is to book appointments. And so you would put that prompt right up into here, pretty much. And you can see the goal is different. The goal is to book an appointment with a customer. So let's go ahead and add that exact same prompt right here. Let's delete all of that data. Let's scroll up. Let's uh, copy the role. Let's paste it up in here. And then let's actually delete the goal from here. And let's uh, delete the role so that we only have the rules and the bottom part. So let's hit save here. 
And now we get to the fun part, the testing part. So this is all, once you, if you followed everything that I just did, your AI bot is ready to test. It's enabled here. We've got some FAQs created right here. We've got, we could trial it in here, but that's kind of boring. Let's try it out in real life. We've got the bot settings on right here and we're on autopilot and it's connected to Facebook. And so I just integrated my Facebook business profile uh, that I don't use anymore right here. And I did test it just a minute ago. And so what's important to do if you test bots uh, again and again, what I like to do is I like to um, just delete the bot. So we've got myself right here. I'm just uh, gonna delete my contact, not delete the bot, but we wanna delete the contact. We'll delete it right here. And by deleting it, you delete all the appointment data, all the other sort of data that might be associated with that contact. Because if you've tried it, you just booked an appointment and that appointment is still live in your contact and you didn't delete your contact, then the bot will automatically, even though you send a new message and it's a new test, switch into FAQ answering mode up here with this prompt based on this note right here, because you've already got a booked appointment in the system. So that's why I like to say, hey, after each test, go ahead, delete the contact, delete all its data, delete all the appointments, and test it from new to make the test as realistic as possible. So now let's actually go to the Facebook page and test the bot. Let's say, hi, who are you? And ask a question, and um, let's see what it replies. And once it replies, you'll see the message that you sent pop up here, ideally, because otherwise you're not integrated on whatever channel you're using. And you can see the bot will respond. And you could manually, if I clicked here, it would send the bot to sleep. So um, there is that time that if you want to pause the bot, you know, you can create automations, you can use that button, you can do whatever you want. And here we've got the reply. Hi, I'm your virtual assistant for Nirvana Life, a luxury wellness and social hub in Changu, Bali. How can I help you today? Um, and then let's go back to Facebook. So the message is showing up right here as well. Let's say I want to book an appointment. Uh, yeah, as soon as possible. And so, cause I had that wait time right there, if we go back to the conversation, you can see it reset the wait time cause it was actually just 15 seconds. It went down to 10. When I sent the second message, it, it waited another 15 seconds and now it's gonna book uh, or consider both messages in its reply instead of just one. So let's see what it says. Cause I didn't even read the F or the prompt that we created here. So it should be a booking bot but let's check it out and see what it responds with. Um, appointment, what type of appointment would you like to book? We have a variety of classes and services. Um, so let's say um, any, what's the next available time? So let's see what it comes up with as a reply to that question. Okay, great. So the AI bots reply was we have several slots, October 9th, uh, 8 a.m. So let's just reply back and say 8 a.m. works. 8 a.m. works. I pretty much just want to show you guys like, hey, this booking bot actually does work. It will actually book me on the calendar and it will actually create a calendar event. And so once it actually books this appointment with here uh, with me right now here at 8 a.m., the appointment will show up right here under book an appointment. So you can see no appointments found right now. Let's give it another second and let it refresh and then we should have an appointment pop up right here. So you can see the appointment was created right here. Uh, it did send a reply with an appointment confirmation. Your appointment is booked for 8 a.m. Uh, October 9th. Thank you for choosing Nirvana Life. We look forward to welcoming you. And if we just switch back here and switch back to book an appointment, boom, there we go. The appointment is on the calendar. And again, based on this appointment being on this calendar, you can do whatever you want from this point on. So if you wanna go into automations and you wanna be like, hey, once this appointment is booked, you can see I'm active in here right now as well. When I showed it earlier, it was zero, zero. And now if we go in here, I did set that trigger up before I recorded this video. Um, we can see that I'm active right in here somewhere, right here, four hours. So the other reminders uh, have passed the two days before. And so now I'm on the wait four hours before my contact, Jonathan Schoenberg right there, and I'll receive appointment confirmation reminder emails before. I can do whatever I want within high level. So pretty much being aware of that and being able to say, hey, once this appointment is booked, 
let's trigger whatever other actions, emails we want is super powerful. And we can see I did also receive that reply on the official Facebook Messenger page right here. So try out this AI chatbot, try out Conversation AI, build your own. I hope I reviewed all of these settings with you pretty well. Um, you can see Conversation AI, there's only a couple of tabs. And if you create these FAQs fast, if you create the AI chatbot prompt fast, it's actually pretty easy and fast to set up. So select the channels, try it out, connect it to your profiles. If you have any questions, comment them down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to work with me and my team, uh, check out the free resources down below as well. I'm really excited to uh, just create a lot of YouTube content, build my community and um, yeah, add a lot of value to the high level industry and community because it's such an amazing place to be. It's such an amazing software to use. Uh, there's such great people using it and uh, I love working with you guys. So I'll see you in the next video. Um, over and out. Peace.